very fired up for the return of professional basketball to Winnipeg. We've got our team, we've got our logo, and now we've got our first player, a hometown product who has been all over the world hooping for the last <laughs> few years. But Chad Posthumus is home. He is the first ever member of the Winnipeg Sea Bears, and he joins us now on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Chad, what's up? Welcome to Winnipeg Sports Talk, and welcome home. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on the show. You know what? I'm great. This is a fun time. We got a lot of excitement about the local hockey teams as we get down the playoff stretch. But, um, you know, we're going to get into spring and we've got a new kid on the block when it comes to the sports scene. <laughs> and it is the Winnipeg Sea Bears of the CEBL. Can't wait to talk to you about the league which you've played in and the team. Um, but you are a hometown product. You were an incredible star at a high school level. Fill us in a little bit on your basketball journey since we saw you starring at River East, playing both north and south of the border as a college player, and then transitioning over to the pro game. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if I'm that new at this point in time. I'm uh, getting up there in age, but uh, still going. Yeah, no, started uh, obviously at River East, just down the road here. Um, and then moving on from there, went to the University of British Columbia for a year, played there. Um, kind of decided that Canada basketball wasn't uh, wasn't just the ceiling for me at that point in time. So made uh, made some changes, went down to play uh, in the U.S., ended up at Moorhead State um, in Kentucky, and that's a Division I school. So playing down there, um, had a really great, really great couple of years there. Brought me, uh, brought me a lot of uh, opportunities, I guess you could say, post uh, – Post my college career, so right out of there, ended up playing with signing with the Chicago Bulls uh, in the NBA. Um, had a summer league contract with them, and then move into a preseason thing. Um, didn't end up working out with them, but uh, kind of opened the doors for me to go play overseas, where I ended up playing in Japan for a few years. Um, and then after that, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, been all over the world. Played here in Canada, played in Argentina, played in China, played in Uruguay. Um, and then traveling around everywhere with the senior men's and Canadian national team as well. Um, this last little bit, we've had World Cup qualifying games all over uh, here in North and South America, the Dominican Republic, along with the America Cup down in Brazil, plus uh, most recently in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and in Caracas, Venezuela. So been been everywhere, as you mentioned. It's been it's been a great journey thus far. Got got the air miles. I got to quickly ask you about playing in Japan. Um, what was that experience like? And what was it like off the court? Because I imagine that you, like, no matter where you went, you were the, probably the tallest person within <laughs> yeah. a, a, a large radius. You'd be surprised on it. The people in Japan aren't actually a lot. I wouldn't say a lot smaller overall. I would say the biggest difference is there's a lot less tall people there, right? Like, the average height, everybody's near that, like, smaller level, right? There's not, like, you're 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, like, you see a 6'3", six, 6'4", six, person every day, every day, everywhere you go, right? Um, I think that's the biggest difference there. But, yeah, having me at, at my height, um, there's obviously you get a lot of stairs here and there. But there, Japan's awesome. I love it. It was if you, haven't, if you can have the opportunity to travel there, I would definitely take it. It's one of the cleanest countries in the world, one of the most well-run um, and the people there are just the politest. They'll do anything to help you out. And it's, it was an amazing experience, honestly. What was the Not hoops just, like there? It was good. Yeah, it was really good. It was really competitive. They, uh, I'd say the top the top level of teams there, they pay they pay really well. But uh, but every team brings in two or three import players. Um, now it's up to about three or four. You're allowed to have two on the court at a time only, though. Um, so every import player that they bring in has some type of NBA experience or NBA name. They like to bring in these big guys, um, not necessarily myself, but guys that are like later on in their NBA careers, maybe phasing out of that to come in and play and sell tickets for them. But, uh, but you're basically going against, uh, another, uh, import player, NBA guy that every night of the, every night, every game there, and then kind of how it runs with, uh, with, if you're going to be winning or losing is how, the local guys, the Japanese players, how they fare against each other. Because for the most part, um, the import players kind of cancel each other out when you're playing. Well, uh, you know, as you mentioned, I mean, uh, you know, Japan and Argentina and all that work with the Canadian uh, national program. Um, and then it was time to come home and, and play professionally. And I guess yeah. 2019, the inaugural season of the CEBL. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about 
coming back to Canada, the opportunity, of course, you remember the championship team in that first year with the Saskatchewan franchise. Um, tell us about the opportunity for the CEBL and what you've seen from this league that we're all going to be introduced to in a couple months live here in Winnipeg. Oh, it's huge. Having this league and, as you mentioned, the opportunity to play here in Canada um, and having the opportunity not only for players to play here, but for fans to watch the best players to play um, that are from Canada because it's it's a league that runs opposite to most leagues around the world, right? So you're playing with top-level European guys. You're playing with some of these bench NBA players or guys that kind of are trying to crack an NBA roster the next season or maybe slipped out of a rotation and fell off of a roster the season before, right? And they're trying to get back. So you're actually playing and get playing with and then um, for the fans getting to watch guys that are playing in the top league in the world um, on a nightly basis. So kind of having that plus with the, the U Sports partnership that they have for these young kids, it's bringing a lot of uh, the talent that normally would go play Division One, staying here in Canada to play U Sports because you have those players um, that dress every night of the 10 players. One of them has to be a U Sports player. So whether they're getting a lot of minutes or not, they're in practice with us every day. They're working on their game. They're playing with pros. So just having that opportunity in the CBL has been, been amazing. Um, and then, yeah, starting back in 2019 in Saskatchewan, there were six teams. Uh, fortunate enough to be on the championship team that year and kind of moving forward, the league has just expanded. It's in every big market aside from uh, Halifax over there on the East coast. Now we're Vancouver to Toronto. Toronto's got two teams. So it's huge. It's uh, it's, it's on the come up. The league's doing great. The CEO, CEO Mike Morielli has been an awesome and just uh, spreading all the, spreading the league and just getting it from the, from the grassroots all the way to the top with some of the partnerships that they have now. Well, we had Mike on the show actually uh, shortly after the team was announced to find out a little bit more on the league. And I mean, it really is exciting. I mean, I'm old enough yeah. to remember the Thunder uh, and the Cyclone here. And I think it's just such a coup for the Sea Bears to be playing at Canada Life Center. Oh, I mean, awesome. uh, yeah. at a world class, uh, you know, facility for something like this. Um, but just before we talk about the Winnipeg team and this opportunity for you, as someone that has, you know, played so much for Canada and had involvement, I mean, to have a league like this for our country at a grassroots level that's giving you sports players opportunities, but also brings in with the unique schedule, top players from around the world. Yeah. Um, I mean, for someone that has basically grown up in this sport, how impactful is, has the CEBL already been? And will it be in a market like Winnipeg, which as we've seen has a huge basketball community that is growing every single year. Yeah, every single year. It's just kind of a testament to the the WNBA and basketball Manitoba and even the PBA, Filipino Basketball Association that we have here. You have hundreds of teams literally competing. I was I was talking to somebody about this earlier today, but um, I think it was Sarah Orleski we were chatting, but it's you have people in gyms from 4 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. every night. Like There's no gyms for basketball. It's grown that much at this point in time. Um, so it's just huge. And then obviously the fans in Winnipeg, I tell everybody this, everybody's like, everybody knocks Winnipeg that's not from Winnipeg, but I'm like, fans here, the people here, they're the best. And everybody that comes and visits, once they're here, they already know that as I'm, as I'm sure you and everyone else knows, just having that Winnipeg connection is something that a lot of people, including you look at myself now, come back to. Um, and I think they're going to take hold of the team and going to embrace it. And I think it's going to be, be really special to have the team here. Kind of like we have the bombers and the jets and everybody is, is always on board with those sellouts all the time. Some of the best fans in the league, right? Well, I, I got to tell you, I mean, uh, you know, having remembered how fun it was when the thunder debuted and the crowds that they had at the old yeah. Winnipeg arena, I mean, I really think there's the potential for this. And, you know, you mentioned the Filipino uh, Basketball uh, Association. Um, you know, we had Sean Moranin on, the uh, you know, the second team All-Canadian from the U of W, um, yeah. young Filipino guy. What a treat he was to have on the program and watch him awesome. play. And, man, I went to that Bison-Westman game, which probably was the biggest game in the history of the men's side of the crosstown rivalry for a trip to Nationals. Yeah. 
I mean, a sold-out crowd, great presence by the Seabears at it, which was probably very fortuitous to have a game of that magnitude just as they're starting. The same year, right? Amazing. But, yeah, but I mean, if you hadn't been paying attention, if you were just a hockey or a football guy and you went to that, you would probably be shocked of just how big it is. And I think we're just scratching the surface of the potential for pro hoops here in Winnipeg. And obviously starting it off with a hometown player like yourself as the first guy signing was probably a huge honor and a great opportunity. Tell us how it all came about that um, the team's here. And now all of a sudden you are the, uh, in a lot of ways, the face of the franchise, at least right now (laughs) until you get some teammates. Yeah, for sure. I know we got a, we got a couple other guys signed and a few more in the works that they're just waiting to announce. So we got, I'm not the, I'm not, I'm not here alone as of, uh, as of right now. Still, we got some guys going, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's honestly super exciting. It's, as you mentioned, an honor just to be the first player here, um, coming back here into Winnipeg, being able to play here and, uh, just, just, yeah, just, it's an honor. Yeah. I don't know what else to say about that. How did um, it come about? I mean, uh, I mean, uh, obviously I'm sure you were quite interested in the Winnipeg opportunity yeah, when you heard so that I, there was going to be a team being a veteran. I of the league. Were, I've been, been chatting, as you mentioned with, as we talked about Mike Morielli for a while now, and there were, there's been murmurings for, uh, for some time now. And then, uh, late last year, uh, I kind of found out something that, uh, the team's likely going to be here. Somebody's going to be coming here. Didn't have an owner yet at the time. Um, didn't have anything like that. But uh, but just the opportunity, I I was like, wow, this is yeah, it's awesome. Embraced it, ready for it. Um, and then when it finally did come around, yeah, super exciting. Um, couldn't have asked for a better owner in uh, David Asper, the family there, um, and uh, just the way that they've done everything, built it up, and the people that they have on the team already here, um, account managers to the operations, everybody. It's been it's been first class all the way. So yeah. Can't uh, can't thank anybody enough for it. Just the opportunity to have it here, right? Chad Possumus, the uh, first ever Winnipeg Sea Bear with us. The season begins at the end of May, May twenty seventh. Um, what what do what should fans, people that are not familiar with the league, need to know about uh, about the CEBL and what they'll see when they uh, get tickets and head down to Canada Life Center to see our new team? I think it's uh, it's a very exciting game. It's very similar to the NBA. Um, in terms of just the type of style and the play that you expect high scoring games, lots of threes, lots of dunks, lots of, uh, lots of maneuverability, lots of exciting players out there. Um, and it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be really exciting. A lot of fun for, for everybody. They play music most of the game. It's not just a basketball game. It's an entire experience you're coming out to. So they got to remember that even if you don't enjoy basketball, just coming out and having a drink with your friends or bringing your kids out for a night. It's, it's awesome. There's something for everybody there. So. It's really exciting. When when, um, when do you guys get to work? I mean, when will you guys get to camp? I mean, obviously, as you mentioned, behind the scenes, there's a ton of work going on to putting this team together. But yeah. um, when do you expect to be on the court and um, getting ready for uh, the debut of Sea Bear basketball here in the peg? So most of the guys, um, I just finished my season in cha- with Champions League uh, a couple weeks ago, and then the Team Canada uh, windows and stuff for World Cup qualifiers. But most of the guys that are going to be on the team and, and playing in the league or finishing up their NBA seasons, their NBA G League seasons and their European seasons um, right around the end of April, beginning of May. Um, some of the guys that go further in playoffs will be closer to June um, and then they'll kind of make the transition over. But for the most part, guys are going to be getting here early May. I think May 10th to 15th is when most of the guys will get here. Training camp starts on the 15th and then obviously that first game, uh, May 27th there. Well, I tell you what, we cannot wait for it. Uh, I can tell you that myself and uh, Michael and a ton of the Winnipeg Sports Talk daily chat are going to be there. Awesome. And, um, Love to we'll hear look it. forward to that home opener on Saturday, May 27th, 7 p.m. downtown. It's the Seabears versus the Vancouver Bandits at Canada Life Center. Of course, folks, if you want to get uh, jump on tickets, um, they're working hard right now to fill that building. So get on over to the website or get in touch with the Seabears to oh, count yourself in. in. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, Chad, promise us you'll come back when the season gets going. We can talk a little bit guys, more definitely. about the big time. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you down at the, uh, I would say, normally the rink. I guess technically it'll be a gym in this case for when the Sea Bears yeah, get exactly. going. Bottom line, our great downtown arena with the newest tenant, um, our new CEBL team, the Winnipeg Sea Bears. Congratulations on being number one in team history. And uh, 
We'll look forward to win number one, hopefully on the 27th oh, of May. Oh, 100%. Yeah, thank you so much. You can uh, follow us, the Seabears Instagram account, and then my personal one, chad.posthumous, and we'll uh, we'll be giving some free tickets away coming up to this uh, this game, trying to pack this place too. So it'll be fun. 